Okay, we're working on this 2014 Dodge Charger here. Uh, we've got a lot of clunking noise up here in the front, and uh, sometimes it's difficult to determine what exactly the problem is. There's a lot of moving parts up here, but um, I believe that these stabilizer links are causing a lot of the issue, and I'm going to show you uh, part in just a second. But I said the stabilizer links are a common issue and it's definitely a cheap place to start if you just absolutely don't know. If you take it in to get a diagnosis that's going to cost you more than the stabilizer links themselves so they're not very expensive uh, and the bushings for the stabilizer bars. Let me show you those. So here we have our stabilizer links. Let's go ahead and get this out of the package. So here's our new stabilizer link. Doesn't matter which way this goes. Uh, comes with a new Teflon locking nut. And you'll notice that the, the new ones are much stiffer, whereas your old one is just going to be flopping around. Now, how we're going to do this as far as removing and installing, we're going to need to hold this hex in here. And this. Um, take some 10 millimeter here we're going to hold that and then we'll take the appropriate size wrench and we'll tighten this while we're holding this steel otherwise this is just going to spin in this ball joint here so there is our new link let's take a look at the bushing now you may or may not need these, but you definitely want to take a look at them. So this is a, a Moog, and the, the originals are going to be different, but this splits and allows you to slip it over the bar there. Okay, so the very first thing, you want to get your rear tire chalked. Right, we're going to go ahead and start breaking the lugs loose with a 22 millimeter. We'll get them on both sides. Okay, so we lifted the car up. I've got a jack stand under this cross member here. I'll show you this, and we've used a jack on each side here. So I've just placed it right along this beam part of the subframe. Uh, you could place it back on the other part of the body in various places, pinch welds, etc. This is where I'm placing these. I'm going to show you where I have my lift points. So I just come back here behind the wheel and we've got this part of the frame you can see here and you can just get I'm just using a block of wood here and we're just getting right along that and done the same thing on the other side so you could do it with one jack but I just got two and lifted at the same time now if we need to go higher we can and we'll just lift it up more and raise our jack stands or get some bigger jack stands Okay, so these are already loose. We're just going to go ahead and completely remove the lugs and get the wheels off of both sides. Okay, I'm just starting over here on the passenger side. I'm going to go in here and get this top nut for our stabilizer link first. So a 13 16 or a 21 millimeter, whatever you've got. We've got to hold this part right here. And we're going to start taking this loose. See how difficult it's going to be. So what I like to do in this case is take a um, another big 
wrench and use it for leverage. Cheater pipe, something. And let's see. We can get it to move here. All right, we got it moving. And I've actually got my wrench. I turned it the wrong way here. Give me a moment. All right, we got it held with our tin. We're just going to start taking this completely loose. And it's going to be... Um, it's a locking nut, so it's it's going to want to be kind of tough, every thread. So once it's a little bit loose, instead of trying to turn the wrench, we can just turn a ratchet here with the 10 millimeter and more easily remove the nut. Okay, now we're just getting down here on this lower part and we're just going to repeat the same process. Now I'll just look at these, They're just flopping around. Yeah, if these are flopping around like that, no good. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and get the one on the other side, same way, and then we'll get on the bushings. Okay, I want to show you something very important before we continue on here. Okay, so as you open up these bushings, um, you're going to get uh, this warning right here. And if you don't heed this, then you may have more noise than you had before. But it tells you here on your bar sizes. And uh, I want to show you probably the easiest way to check this. So basically, 30 millimeter or 1.180 so you're gonna you want to measure that bar to figure out now this bushing and I didn't see uh, you know the part number or whatever but anyways this bushing is not going to work for my bar uh, the size of this bushing is the middle one there it's 1.06 which uh, one and a sixteenth so um, I'll show you the easiest way that that I found to check this. Now you see I've got a couple of sockets here, and I've measured these, but this is um, this socket here fits in there. Uh, let's see what is this three quarter socket, but you know they're not all going to be the same. But I measured it, got one in a sixteenth. Three quarter works. This is roughly the size of my bar right here. This, this is going to be the 1 inch and 180, or 1 and 3 sixteenths. And as you see, you know, if you try to cram that in there, it's just going to spread this out. It's probably not going to rotate properly. So, we can't use these. Um, let's see, where's my little piece of wire? Okay, another way that I kind of verified this is I took a little piece of wire and I wrapped it around this and then went and checked it with a bar. Of course, you could tell by looking at it that it was too small, but I wanted to make sure that it was, in fact, this size so when I, I can get the proper one. Now, I'm not going to be able to put these on, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how you would take this off and... Uh, you know, we'll basically go ahead so you'll know that, but I'm going to have to get the proper ones. So this 
K200-170 is not the proper kit for this one. Okay, so we're going to come back here. The first thing we have to do is get a 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths. We're going to get this heat shield. Okay, now we're just going to come on the back side here and we've got another 8 millimeter. Go ahead and get this out. Okay, so we'll slip that off. And just to show you over here on the driver's side, same thing except the uh, 8 millimeters down on the bottom there. Okay, I've got a 15 millimeter. Okay, and you can see at this point, you could do these one side at a time. And this also has this bracket that goes behind it here. And I want to show you another thing. All right, if you look right here on the end of your bushing, you should have a number. This is where it's hidden behind this heat shield. It says 30 right there. So that's confirmation that um, the bushing is going to be the one and 3 16th. Let me uh, show you this slips off of here. This is the original. It doesn't look horrible and uh, you know I might even leave these but yeah there's that number. So um, if these are worn out severely usually it'd be like kind of like egg shaped or something but uh, it actually doesn't look too bad. So uh, these may very well be okay, but that's how um, you would check that so you don't get the wrong one. So, you know, if you got your new ones, just slip it back on and get the other piece back in behind there. So let's put that number facing back where it was this back and that'll slip right back into that groove now I'm going to get some some medium Loctite and that fits right in the groove of this Okay, we're going to torque these to 45 foot pounds. Leave that slightly loose. I'm just snugging these up with the quarter inch. Uh, if you wanted to torque them, I wouldn't go but 80 inch pounds. Okay, so these are side specific, so it may not matter if you flip it, if you got the right side, you can flip it this way or this way, it doesn't matter, but uh, you won't be able to put it on the wrong side you'll see if you try so uh, we're going to go ahead and get this in place okay another thing I'm going to be using the original 
nuts that come off of here. Now you can see the difference. Um, now if your nuts, if these are messed up, the threads are stripped, then you won't want to use them and uh, use the original, I mean use the ones that come with it, but you probably want to put like a washer. If you look at the difference in these, I mean, um, there's quite a bit of difference. So this one's, these are fine, so we're going to be reused. This one on the upper, these are self-locking, and uh, I've never seen where you couldn't reuse these. You see how the end is kind of, has this weird egg shape, and that's how it, it locks so we're going to be reusing these uh, the original so just like with um, taking it off we have to hold this and use the the wrench or it's just going to spin on us so we'll get our 10 millimeter. Now instead of turning that other part, I want to actually just turn this because I don't want to spin this fitting too much. So this one down here calls for 95 foot pounds. There's no way I can get it there without spinning. So you're using a crow's foot type. So I just hold it with the with that one and we just snug it up got the double wrench you could use a cheater pipe and we're just gonna crank it down and so we've got it really good and tight and then we know that we've got it got it pretty well torqued So we're just going to run this one down the same way, holding it and turn it with the wrench. All right, we're going to see if we can't torque this to 75. Is what this one's calling for. Okay, so I did have to hold it and snug it down with the wrench first, but then I'm able to get the 75 foot-pounds. All right, so there's our nice new stabilizer links. And we're all finished up. Uh, we just need to get our wheels back on. And nothing left to do but to take it for a test drive and see if some of these noises have quietened down. Okay, I'm going to torque these both sides 110 foot pounds. We're going to go in like a star pattern. Always tighten the star pattern. And then just double check. Okay, so I didn't even make it out of my driveway for some of the clunkety clunk noises came immediately back. Um, so did it solve all of the noises completely? No. It helped some, but I can you know tell there's going to be other components under here that I'm going to have to take a look at. Ball joints and upper control arms, etc. So um, it's going to be a little bit more involved. Um, you know, was this a waste of money? No, absolutely not. These stabilizer links completely worn out it's a cheap place to start because a lot of times you replace these and you get rid of the noise so uh, i think the bushings are fine you know going in there and inspecting those so i'm probably not going to mess with those at this point but i will leave links to the correct one and to these uh, stabilizer links these worked out really well they're a lot like the oem so that's going to do it for the video if you um, like the content on the channel 
please uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Um, and I thank you for watching.